The first rays of the sun bled over the horizon, casting long shadows across the harsh, barren landscape as Snake's jeep maneuvered through the rugged terrain. His eyes were sharp and observant as he scanned the environment. His face was set and determined, reflecting both the scars of his past battles and the weight of the mission thus far. Operation Intrude. Metal Gear. Dr. Madnar's revelations. These thoughts weighed heavy, too heavy for any one man. But Snake stood firm, at the tip of the spear. The jeep slowed and parked behind a copse of twisted, war-blasted trees. Snake killed the engine and grabbed a pair of binoculars, surveying the distant structure of Building 3, a fortress that was bristling with defenses. Heavy defenses, as expected. Can't afford to make any mistakes. Snake, we tried to contact you, but you went dark. We've been concerned on this end. Report your status. It's good to hear from you, boss. I ran into a few... obstacles. But I'm now on the perimeter of Building 3. I met up with the Resistance. They helped me get out of a tight scrape. Thanks to them, I've gathered considerable intel since we last spoke. Then tell me, what have you learned? The layout of Building 3 is complex, heavily fortified. Metal Gear is inside. I found Madnar and his daughter. He confirmed its location. I managed to escort them to a resistance safe house stationed just outside the base. He told me everything I need to know about how to destroy the weapon. This is it, boss. I'm finally ready to finish this. Boss, there's one other thing. There's also a group of prisoners, captive resistance members in the building. I can't leave them behind. Understood. That complicates things. We can't have any loose ends that might expose us. We can't waste any more time, Snake. I'm sorry, boss. They're highly alert of my presence here now. Like I said earlier, every enemy I've encountered has been fed intel they shouldn't know. My codename, Foxhound's involvement, my location. I don't know how they got the intel, but there's definitely a leak somewhere. I understand that time's not on our side, but we need to ensure the prisoners are saved. I have to do this, boss. I made a promise. That's fine. But don't let this compromise the main mission. I won't, boss. What's your current location? Just outside the main entry, planning my approach. Hold on, Snake. New intel just came in from HQ. The main entrance is heavily patrolled. They've locked it down tight. Since you've confirmed that they're aware of your presence, you won't be able to get in that way. I'm sending you alternate coordinates. It's a side access route into the building, less guarded. Details on your iDroid. Got it. Thanks, boss. Commencing mission. Watch yourself out there, Snake. We can't afford to lose you. Be vigilant. Snake stood up and stealthily made his way to the new entry point, blending into the environment like a shadow. He reached the secondary entrance, cautiously approaching the door. His hand rested on his weapon. Let's hope this intel holds up. He opened the door slowly, when suddenly, as if on cue, multiple guards suddenly appeared from hidden positions around the area. Gunfire erupted as Snake was forced back, returning fire in retaliation. After managing to safely find temporary cover, Snake quickly used a combination of swift and calculated movements as he ducked and weaved between cover spots. Attention all units! Divert all available manpower to backup! Repeat! Send backup now! Damn it! Have to get inside now. While maintaining his cover, Snake rushed to the nearby security panel by the entrance, using it to close the bulkhead doors cutting off the reinforcements before they could reach his position. The guards didn't attempt to pursue, much to Snake's dismay. As the gunfire died down, he surveyed the area and collected himself. He breathed out slowly, refocusing on the mission at hand. Boss, I'm in. Had a warm welcome, but nothing I couldn't handle. Good. Stay sharp. Snake continued to move cautiously through the corridors within Building 3. 
The environment was oppressive, with shadows clinging to the corners of the narrow passageways. He paused beneath an overhead light, casting a sharp silhouette against the stark walls. His expression was unreadable, but his posture suggested alertness. As he proceeded, his thoughts provided a window into his mindset. Since the beginning of the mission, orders were vague, fragmented and inconsistent. Not like the big boss he knew, it was as if a shadow followed Snake with every step. The clarity and precision that defined Big Boss's legendary reputation were absent, replaced by chaos. Snake's mind continued to race. Was this a setup? Or some sort of test? He couldn't accept that it could possibly be a betrayal. Why? To what end? Whoever was orchestrating this knew exactly what they were doing. They were hurting Snake, controlling his path. The idea of being played in someone else's game infuriated Snake. He was determined to get to the bottom of it. He couldn't let it go. Not without a fight. Hey Snake, how are you holding up? Good so far. I've managed to make my way inside Building 3. Good work. I've gained access to the building's security system. I'm sending you the current layout now. Thanks, Diane. What's the situation with the prisoners? They're still being held in the cell wing. It's to the east of your current location. I'll mark it on your map. They're on high alert, Snake. They've upgraded their armaments. More firepower, more armor. Please be careful. I'm aware. They know I'm here now. They're probably waiting for me. But don't worry, I'll be okay. I hope so. I had the guys put an extra radio in your pack. Once you've secured the prisoners, give them the radio and send them back the way you came. It's the safest route out. I'll be able to safely guide them to avoid any patrols, the same way I did with Jennifer. After you're done with the prisoners, you'll need to head to the building's only operational elevator, also marked on your map. It leads directly to the 100th floor basement. Understood. Is there anything else? That's it. The rest is up to you. Now they're aware you're here. I worry for you, Snake. Just be careful. Seems like they always have been. Thanks again, Diane. Snake resumed his cautious advance towards the prison cell wing, now armed with crucial intel and a clear plan. Arriving at the prison area, Snake assessed the security layout Diane described, confirming her intel. He quickly worked to disable the cameras and used his iDroid to bypass the electronic locks on the cell wing floor. As he entered the cell wing, he was immediately confronted by a wiry-looking mercenary who stood brazenly with a gun in hand. All the prisoners were lined up on their knees in front of the man, their heads bowed. He aimed his gun directly at the back of their heads. The tension was palpable. Once the feared leader of the notorious terrorist group, Eggplant, Dirty Duck's hands were stained with conflict long before he set foot in outer heaven. Known for his ruthless tactics and sadistic tendencies, he turned mercenary when his group disbanded, driven underground by global counterterrorism efforts. His transition to a gun for hire was seamless. His cruelty was a valuable asset in the murky waters of private wars. When Outer Heaven called, seeking his expertise, Dirty Duck saw an opportunity not just for wealth, but to wield power again, to command fear and respect. Many guards suddenly revealed themselves hiding on the upper levels of the room, waiting to ambush with their guns trained on Snake. <laughs> A trap. What took you so long, Snake? We've been waiting for you. <laughs> Drop your weapon or I start making examples out of all your new friends here. Let them go. You don't need to hurt them. I know you want me. You're not calling the shots here. Now do as I say and drop your weapon. A brief standoff occurred, both men assessing each other. As the tension peaked, Dirty Duck hiding behind the prisoners became visibly jittery his grip tightening on his weapon as he glared at Snake. 
After a few nail-biting seconds, Dirty Duck cracked. Kill him now! Kill him! The guards encircling the area readied their weapons. And Snake dove for cover, narrowly evading a hail of bullets. As Snake took cover, he thought back to the standoff moments before. His years of training instantly kicked in. He had quickly assessed all the guards' positions and knew with pinpoint accuracy where they were located. With precise, silent movements, he disabled all the lights in the room with an EMP grenade. As the room lay in complete darkness, the only light emanated from the guards' frantic firing. Snake stealthily took out the guards one by one. Each takedown was methodical and quiet minimizing any further alert to his presence. As Snake neutralized the last guard, the emergency lights came on, revealing the aftermath of his assault and Dirty Duck's terrified face. As Snake reoriented himself towards Dirty Duck, he heard a single gunshot. His head snapped up in alarm. In his panic, Dirty Duck had shot a prisoner dead in a desperate attempt to re-establish control. Show yourself right now, Snake, or I'll kill them all. With no options left that would avoid further bloodshed, Snake stepped out from his cover, his expression one of controlled fury. Okay, you win. Please, stop. You don't have to do this. Dirty Duck smirked maliciously, pressing the barrel of his gun against another prisoner's head. <laughs> Get on your knees. Reluctantly, Snake kneeled, his eyes locked on Duck, gauging his next move. As Duck stepped closer, reveling in his apparent victory, one brave prisoner saw an opportunity. Now! The prisoner, while cuffed, nudged Dirty Duck's arm as he moved past, causing the gun to momentarily sway. Seizing the moment, Snake sprang forward. He disarmed Duck, sending him sprawling to the ground. Snake delivered a final shot with Duck's own gun, finally eliminating the threat. Thanks. That was a close one. He was crazy. He would have killed us all if it meant getting to you. You all okay? I think so. But it's a shame we all couldn't make it. He was a good man. I'm sorry. I couldn't save you all. It's not your fault. You did all you could. We all knew what we were signing up for when we came here. Dirty Duck was truly evil. He would have killed us all eventually. He's tormented us ever since we were captured here. He was sick in the head. He always enjoyed watching us suffer. The guards weren't even aware of the torture he subjected us to. He would always turn off the cameras and make sure he was alone with us before he would. I'm glad he's dead. Don't worry. He can't hurt you anymore. I'm gonna get you all out of here. Who are you anyway? I'm Snake. I don't know how much you know. But I came to stop Outer Heaven from creating Metal Gear. If they're successful, they'll be able to wield unchecked power over the entire world. The Resistance sent me. They're all waiting for you back at the safe house. The Resistance? Do you know someone named Jennifer? Yeah. She was here in the base looking for her brother. She saved my life. She's my sister. Is she okay? She's fine. I sent her back to the safe house. I promise to return the favor and save all of you. Here, take this radio. It'll patch you into the team. Snake, how's everything going? Jennifer, I'm here with the prisoners. I've got someone who'd like to speak with you. Hello, Jen. Junior, is that you? Yeah, it's me. It's good to hear your voice. We just got rescued by Snake. We're okay. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried sick. Are the others with you? Are they safe? We're safe for now. We lost one, though. It was... There was nothing we could do. No. Listen. You guys aren't safe yet. You still need to get out of there. Please. Be careful, little brother. Stay close to Snake, you hear? We will. Don't worry, Jen. Sorry to cut you guys off, but we have to get moving. 
Jennifer, you'll see your brother soon. Thank you, Snake. Diane, I have the prisoners. We need to get them out now. Let's go over the plan one more time. Right, of course. Okay, this should be straightforward enough. So you need to go back the way you came. You'll have noticed halfway down the corridor on your way to the cells, a diverging path. Down there is the elevator that leads to the 100th floor basement. That's where you'll split from the prisoners. Then I'll take over and guide them home. Okay, that sounds like a plan. We're moving out. As Junior and Snake listened to the instructions given to them, there was a brief moment of silence as they mutually acknowledged the gravity of the situation. Everyone, grab a weapon. While the freed prisoners quickly armed themselves with the fallen guard's weapons, Snake gave them a reassuring nod before they headed back down the corridor. A few cautious moments later, they arrived at the critical junction that Diane had pointed out. All right, this is where I have to leave you guys. That's your route out. It'll take you to the exit leading to the safe house. Just listen to Diane's directions. Stay low and move fast. All right, everyone. Just like we discussed. Stick together. Remember, Diane is on the radio. There's no one better than her. The group murmured in agreement, adjusting their weapons. However, just as they prepared to move, a sudden burst of gunfire echoed down the corridor Snake was about to enter. The path to the elevator. Snake and the group immediately took cover, but the gunfire split them up. Snake peered around the corner, his eyes narrowing as he spotted a squad of heavily armored guards advancing toward his position. He was trapped. Damn it. I have no choice but to take them head on. Get going. I'll handle this. There's too many of them, even for you. They'll kill you, Snake. We can help. No, get these people to safety. That's your mission. No, Snake. We're not just here to escape. We're here to fight Outer Heaven, too. We can cover you. You need to reach that elevator. What about Jennifer? She'll understand. You're not gonna take no for an answer, are you? Fine. Then let's do this. Junior turned sharply and signaled to the other prisoners, who were all in solidarity. They quickly positioned themselves, readying their weapons to provide a barrage of suppressing fire. All right, guys. On my mark. We provide covering fire for Snake until he's clear. We hold them off, no matter what. We're all in this together, Snake. Now go! Snake dashed toward the elevator as Junior and the others opened fire, drawing the guard's attention. Bullets ricocheted off the walls as Snake maneuvered his way to the elevator. As the gun battle raged on, Snake managed to reach the elevator under the cover of the constant suppressing fire. The elevator dinged open, and Snake slipped inside, turning to give Junior a nod of thanks. Junior nodded back, then turned to rally the prisoners as they continued the battle. Good luck, Snake. The elevator doors closed on Snake as he descended further into the depths of Building 3, heading toward the hangar where Metal Gear awaited. His heart pounded with anticipation for what lay ahead. Finally arriving at the 100th floor basement, Snake stepped out, revealing the vast hangar of Building 3. The hangar was unnaturally quiet, the usual hum of activity eerily absent. Metal Gear. He slowly scanned the massive room. The colossal silhouette of Metal Gear loomed in the distance dormant, yet imposing under the sparse lighting. Snake! It's a trap! Schneider! They knew Snake! It's all been... 
Schneider, what the hell is going on? Snake, you need to abort the mission. Pull out now. Abort? But I'm right here, boss. I've got Metal Gear in my sights. The mission's almost done. I can end this right now. That's an order, Snake. The mission is compromised. It's too dangerous to continue. Shut YouTube down and evacuate immediately. I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of turn, sir, but I need answers. It's chaos topside, boss. There's people risking their lives on my behalf so that I can finish this thing. Why now? What aren't you telling me? Don't question me, boy. You need to trust me, Snake. Get out of there now. Shaking with determination, Snake gathered himself and resumed his approach to Metal Gear, determined to finish what he started. The stakes were at their highest point, but he knew one truth. Metal Gear was a real threat that needed to be stopped. As Snake neared the colossal machine, the sudden activation noises of the tank broke the silence. Proximity lights flickered as Snake stepped across the threshold, and mechanical whirs filled the hangar as the behemoth began to power up. Damn it! It's already active! I've got to hurry! Snake rushed forward urgently, pulling out the plastic explosives as he moved closer to the awakening Metal Gear. He strategically placed a charge at a key point on the first leg, as Dr. Madnar instructed. Before Snake had the chance to plant the final bomb, Metal Gear's automated systems detected his presence, identifying him as an immediate threat. Though not fully awakened and still attached to its maintenance station, its mobility was limited. However, it was capable enough to raise its giant leg and kick Snake across the room, slamming him into a wall causing debris to fall on top of him. Metal Gear charged up its weaponry, targeting him for elimination. Snake, trapped under the debris, hurriedly pushed it off and stood up, reorienting himself. The weapon finished charging and unleashed a solid red beam of light directly at Snake with incredible speed. Narrowly dodging the laser blast, the heat and light seared past him as he dove for cover. Damn, that was too close. As it began charging a second shot, Snake saw one last opportunity to plant the final charge. As he reached Metal Gear, it lifted its leg again, attempting to crush him. With a quick dodge roll, Snake landed next to the final leg, and threw the plastic explosive at the vulnerable spot. It had hit its mark. With the charges set, Snake retreated to a safe distance, clutching the detonator tightly. He took a moment to steady his breath, then pressed the button before Metal Gear had a chance to unleash its second laser blast. Explosions rocked the hangar as the charges detonated. Metal Gear shuddered violently, its critical systems failing. It emitted a cacophonous roar of twisting metal and exploding circuits before collapsing into a heap of wreckage. The chain reaction created by the plastic explosives caused its internals to explode from the inside. Metal Gear. It's finally over. With the immediate threat finally neutralized, Snake allowed himself a brief moment of relief. Boss, this is Snake. Metal Gear is destroyed. Mission complete. I'm gonna attempt to get out of here and extract. Over. HQ, do you copy? Metal Gear is neutralized. Repeat, the mission is complete. Anybody? Respond. The silence was shattered by the sudden blare of alarms. Attention all personnel. Building 3's self-destruct sequence has been activated. T minus 30 minutes to total base-wide destruction. Please evacuate immediately. Repeat, evacuate immediately. Snake reacted quickly to the announcement, glancing around the hangar and calculating his next move. His expression was one of grim apprehension, understanding the magnitude of the situation. Not just for him, but for everyone involved. Need to find a way out. Now. As the countdown continued in the background, Snake started moving, each step a race against time. He navigated through the complex maze of corridors and bulkheads in the underground levels, desperately trying to find the fastest route out of the rapidly destabilizing base. Rounding a corner, he stopped dead in his tracks. Ahead of him, 
illuminated by the flickering emergency lights, stood the phantom of Big Boss, Venom Snake. His figure imposing and calm despite the chaos. The two men faced each other in the shadowy space, the sound of alarms and the distant rumble of explosions echoing around them. The air was thick with tension and questions. Running won't save you, Snake. Not from this. Boss, I didn't want to believe it. The leak, it was you all along. Yes, but it's a lot more than that. I'm the commander of Outer Heaven. I... I kept telling myself that it was ridiculous. You couldn't possibly be the one behind it all. But it's obvious now. I was... naive. You... bastard. That's right. Don't blame yourself. Blame me. Why are you doing this? We built Outer Heaven as a sanctuary, a place free from the manipulations of governments. This is nothing personal, Snake. I never wanted you to be a part of this. Then why bring me into this? Why would you send me to destroy your own creation? Someone had to take the fall. Truthfully speaking, you were never meant to get this far. I was hoping that you'd be dead by now, but you went further than we all imagined. You even destroyed Metal Gear. That's what you ordered me to do. I fulfilled my mission. You at least owe me some answers. Tell me why you built this place to oppose our allies. Like I said, Outer Heaven is meant to be more than just a military fortress. It's an ideal. But I don't expect you to understand. You're just another dead soldier, following orders. Too short-sighted to see the bigger picture. I can see it in your eyes. You see me as a traitor. But we're actually the last line of defense against total control. You're insane. You used me, betrayed your unit, your country. You lied to everyone. How many people have died because of you? You're just another terrorist. A warmonger. And what are you, Snake? A pawn for the politicians? A tool for the bureaucrats? Just to be thrown to the trash heap the moment you stop becoming useful. Do you ever stop to think about that? I give... No. We give soldiers like us a chance to be part of something greater. No doubt these words are lost on you. This war... I've lost comrades. The pain I feel will never leave. I couldn't protect those I loved. I couldn't protect my people. It's like they're all still here. If you make it out of here, you'll feel it too, Snake. One day, my only wish is to see her vision become a reality. But I realize that can never be so long as they still exist. So the only thing I can do now is fulfill his will. A haven for soldiers. Tell me. What do you fight for, Snake? I fight for what I believe is right. And right now, that means stopping you. Then we have nothing more to discuss. I'm afraid only one of us is going to leave here alive. I won't let you get away with this. This ends now. The two stood off, the veteran and the protege once bound by mutual respect. 
now divided by ideology. As the base's self-destruct sequence counted down, their final battle loomed. A tragic culmination of a shared past and a divergent path. Venom suddenly brandished his knife and charged with lethal grace, honed by decades of warfare. Even at his advanced age, his movements were a blur. Each strike meant to disable and kill. Snake countered with equal precision using CQC techniques, his training under Big Boss flashing through his mind in vivid, brutal clarity. Venom employed his own CQC as they exchanged a series of near misses and blocks. Venom's left arm was unusually strong, causing Snake more and more trouble in the exchanges. Snake dodged a particularly vicious knife thrust, rolling away and coming up with his pistol drawn. He fired several shots in quick succession, forcing Venom into cover. Venom responded with shots from a sidearm of his own, creating a deadly dance of bullets and movement. Both were masters of their craft, predicting and countering each other's tactics with eerie foresight. Snake ducked behind a pillar, breathing heavily, his mind racing for an advantage. The fight escalated quickly, both combatants showcasing years of experience. Venom started to gain the upper hand and managed to nick Snake in the arm. A reminder that only one combatant could be victorious. Snake recoiled in pain, using his momentum to roll back and gain distance. As Venom advanced with increasing confidence, Snake spotted a bank of oxygen cylinders stacked near an electrical panel, a hazardous combination amidst gunfire. With a plan forming, Snake fired at the panel as Venom charged toward him. The bullet sparked against the metal panel, igniting a small fire. Venom also had a plan to end the battle with a killing blow from his bionic arm, but he hesitated, realizing the impending danger. It was too late to stop his forward motion. Snake took aim and shot the oxygen cylinders again. The resulting explosion was massive, a concussive force that rocked the hangar. While Snake was safely behind cover, Venom was caught in the blast, the shockwave hurling him backward into debris. Venom lay amidst the wreckage caused by the explosion. Shrapnel and smoke filled the air around him. He struggled, pinned to the wall and clearly in pain. His legs were damaged. He was unable to move. Mere moments passed before he finally lost consciousness. Snake approached, his weapon now lowered but his alertness unchanged. He surveyed the destruction, his face a mask of confliction. A warrior forced to confront the cost of his victory. He stood over Venom, the man who he thought was mentor, commander, and now adversary. The finality of the moment was marked by the continuing alarms and distant screams, the base itself seeming to mourn the inevitable conclusion of the clash. Snake turned away, stepping back into the shadows of the hangar, leaving Venom amidst the chaos of his own making. He disappeared, a solitary figure, moving deeper into the darkness of outer heaven. The base began to ignite, Explosives set in the deep foundations of the base caused the building to quake. Amid the roar of explosions and the crackle of fire, Snake found a brief respite behind a crumbling wall. He quickly accessed his codec, initiating an urgent call. Snake! I've lost contact with the Resistance. What's happening out there? Everything's a mess. I think they've been compromised. They're all fighting topside, Diane. It was a betrayal. My unit commander. He was behind it all. You mean, Big Boss? Yes, but there's no time to explain. Metal Gear's been destroyed, and a self-destruct sequence has been triggered. This place is going to go up in smoke in 10 minutes. I need an exit route now. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. I'm mapping the quickest way out for you. Head to the west sector. There's an emergency exit that should get you to the surface. It's the emergency ladder access. You're gonna have to climb, Snake. I got it. On my way. Hurry, Snake! Snake ended the communication and took a deep breath before sprinting toward the designated exit route. He arrived at a heavy sealed door marked with emergency exit symbols. The door was malfunctioning but half open. 
he quickly squeezed under and proceeded through, revealing a narrow vertical shaft with a series of ladders disappearing into the darkness above. He began his desperate ascent, climbing rapidly as the structure around him shook violently. Debris fell from above, narrowly missing him as he continued to ascend the seemingly endless ladder. He paused briefly, his muscles burning from the exertion, sweat mixing with the dirt on his face. He looked down the dark elevator shaft, then up toward a faint light at the top, his only chance to get out alive. Exhausted but undeterred, Snake resumed his climb with desperate urgency. The sound of the lower level alarm started to fade into the background, replaced by the echo of his own labored breathing and the distant rumbles of explosions. Snake finally emerged from the ladder access onto the surface, gasping for fresh air. He staggered away from the opening as the ground continued to shake violently. Reaching the outer perimeters of Building 3, Snake was greeted by a chaotic landscape. Mass panic, mixed with firefights between fleeing rebels and outer heaven forces, explosions in the distance, and the roar of approaching helicopters soaring across the sky. Amidst the chaos and confusion, Snake sprinted toward a nearby cliff that overlooked the facility. As he reached the edge, he stopped to catch his breath, looking back at the inferno of Building 3. Snake threw himself to the ground as Outer Heaven imploded behind him. A massive fireball rose into the dawn sky, illuminating his battered and worn silhouette. As he lay on his back, he watched the sky slowly brighten as the echoes of Outer Heaven's destruction faded into silence. The gunfire and explosions were suddenly replaced by the solemn sounds of debris and smoke. Snake, you made it out. Thank God. I'm so glad you're safe. So, it's over then? Outer Heaven is destroyed? Yeah. It's all gone, Diane. I need to reach the Resistance. Make sure they made it out. Can you help me? I'm... afraid there's no time for that, Snake. What do you mean? After losing contact with the Resistance, my communication link to Outer Heaven also began to fail. I was running blind. Since then, I've been searching for any shred of info I can find. Acting on a hunch, I focused my attention on activity from the West, including your Foxhound and the Pentagon. I managed to intercept NATO communications, which revealed alarming news. They're planning an aerial bombardment to completely destroy Outer Heaven and the surrounding area. The operation is scheduled to commence imminently. What? But I can report to HQ that the mission was successful. They can't just bomb indiscriminately. There's not just Outer Heaven forces here. There are civilians, too. I'm sorry, Snake. Their directives have changed. They've already set their plans in motion. I don't think Foxhound has anything to do with the decision. The situation back at Foxhound headquarters has become chaotic. Your commander suddenly went AWOL and it's thrown the entire operation into disarray. Big Boss. Now we know why. They were monitoring your progress, Snake, and have noted the situation with Big Boss. It seems like the Allies on the ground have been considered acceptable losses to ensure the threat of Outer Heaven is completely neutralized. They're not going to risk any of it surviving. What about the safe house? Schneider? Jennifer? We have to make sure they're okay. There's no time, Snake. Listen. They've established temporary extraction points for personnel in the area. They won't be able to get everyone out, but I won't allow you to die here. I'm directing you to the nearest extraction point. Tell them you're an agent of Foxhound. They'll get you out. Diane, you're not listening to me, damn it. I can't just leave everyone behind. I'm afraid you have no choice. I'm going to do all I can for them. Snake, you have to go now. I just want you to know that you've done more for us than anyone ever has. You gave us hope for a brighter future here. 
a future without war. I hope we can meet again one day. Goodbye, Snake. With the weight of the crushing revelation looming over him, Snake resigned himself to the inevitable. There was nothing he could do. His face masked internal conflict and pain as he began his trek toward the extraction point. The burden of his survival bore down on him. Haunted by Big Boss's betrayal, the potential loss of his comrades, and the stark reality of his abandonment by the very forces he served. His thoughts swirled with confusion, guilt, and disillusionment toward the manipulations of the conflict that demanded everything from him, and seemingly offered nothing in return. The sounds of distant explosions grew louder, signaling the impending bombardment. As Snake reached the designated extraction point, a makeshift helipad marked by flares. As he waited for extraction, his gaze turned back toward the devastated landscape, the rising smoke mirroring the turmoil within. The ruins of Outer Heaven smoldered in the silent dawn. The echo of the final bombardment had faded into history, leaving a haunting quiet over the landscape. Operation Intrude N313 culminated in a NATO-led aerial bombardment. Official reports mentioned an earthquake, a natural disaster, a cover-up. But whispers of nuclear explosions circulated among those who dared to speak the truth. The facade maintained by the media hid the real devastation that had occurred. Outer heaven was erased, considered an acceptable loss by multinational forces. Many war orphans and refugees were created as a result of the operation, collateral, in the never-ending game of war. Many survivors sat huddled around makeshift fires, their faces marked by the loss and grief of the past few days. Among them, a man moved quietly, aiding the wounded. His presence was strong, defiant, like a silent vow of retaliation and rebirth. This new leader had emerged from the shadows, Considered neither a villain nor a hero, he simply became a savior to the desperate survivors. Big Boss stood alone, looking out over a vast landscape. The setting sun casted a long shadow, mirroring a long road ahead. His thoughts drifted to Solid Snake, the man who had far surpassed his expectations. His path would no doubt cross with him once more in a fateful encounter. The saga had not ended, but merely paused as the world continued to turn, unaware of the deep currents, shaping its destiny.
Hello, Ahab. Ishmael. <laughs> you really kept me waiting. I just wanted you to know that I've made it out safely. They won't suspect a thing. You played your role perfectly. I see. That's good. So at least I've done, done something right here. Hmm. I never expected him to succeed. <laughs> it seems that solid snake was more confident than either of us gave him credit for. Quite a heavy tuition for such a meager lesson. It's over. He's destroyed the Metal Gear and activate the self-destruct sequence. Out of heaven, we'll go up in smoke in a matter of minutes. And the public will, will think that Big Boss died with it. I see. Are you sure you can't make an escape? <laughs> Positive. You got me good. I can't feel my lower body. This, this is it for me, Ishmael. I'm out of digoxin. You can get me up this time. Outer Heaven won't die with you. As long as a man carrying the name of Big Boss is alive, there will always be someone striving to create a nation for soldiers. Are you familiar with Zanzibar land? Okay, I'm not. Selena Yarsk. The location of our first and last mission is part of the Fox unit. <laughs> last I heard of it, they, they split it off from the Soviet Union and became their own state. Hmm. No. Never mind. It's not something you need to worry about anymore. Don't worry. I'll keep our dream alive. From today onward, the name of Big Boss is something you no longer have to bear. Thank you, Ahab. And goodbye. <laughs> so my mission is finally coming to an end. After so long. It was my pleasure, Ishmael. No. Big Boss. Come to pick me up then. <laughs>